then there's Welcome to change. Today's a sunny day. Let's go out to play. Even when rain is on its way. Ignore the clouds of gray and what the warnings say. The wind comes alive, blows us away. Just when we think we're out of the rain, a sunny day becomes a hurricane. You can live your life. Hope it stays the same. Open your arms wide. Embrace the change. We walk in straight lines without talking in rhyme. Acting surprised when we're caught for the crime. Stumbling rhythms. Not keeping time, flailing away in some vague pain of mind. Just when you think you are out of the rain, a sunny day becomes a hurricane. You can live your life, hope it stays the same. Open your arms wide Welcome to change Because nothing stays the same So welcome what's new When it's out of the blue Why spend your life Wearing out shoes Pull to your heart what you want to do What you decide You're free to choose So when Are you going to Catch Your heart On fire And dance With stars Above of the God you love Why do we make them up? We are more than enough We are made of the same stuff We are diamonds in the rough all the gods we seek, the gods we seek, the gods we seek became us, so we can breathe and touch, and learn to feel love, oh love is so sweet. Flesh and blood. Why slow down the flood? Shower in the sands of time. Open your hands to find. Time is the prize once we understand that it's all right. To keep making plans without knowing how long in the wind we stand. Just when you think you are out of the rain, a sunny day becomes a hurricane. You can live your life, hope it stays the same. Oh, Welcome the chain and 
call it by its name. Nothing stays the same. Thank you. Good things happen, and today I'm embracing my change by reading you a poem that I wrote at midnight last night called Face Plant. <laughs> Should I post it on Instagram, I asked my 15-year-old son late last night. No, he said flatly, clearly impatient with my lack of Instagram etiquette. Perhaps I was hoping for a little sympathy for my unexpected, unexpected slip on the ice, face plant, and trip to the ER. Well, who wouldn't? After the triage nurse asked if I was safe at home and several of the six other subsequent hospital employees that came by peered at my face and sympathetically cooed, Poor you. Did I realize that this could look like a punch in the face? My husband knew they were asking and eyeballing him when he came in to bring me chicken noodle soup while I waited for x-rays and a tetanus shot. I recounted to him all the times I have been asked over the years at doctor's visits if I felt safe. I do. I feel safe and he took care of me and told me he would do anything for me. And for all of my complaints, I am lucky that the feeling, that feeling unsafe has never been my plight. Of this, I can be sure. Thank you. Uh, this is a revival. <clears throat> he was the bedrock of your life. You lived your dream, you were his wife, and every day was blessed with reverie. You'd run whenever he would call, the, the wind could howl, the snow could fall, each smile and touch a treasured memory. With praise each day to have, to hold, a future filled with only gold, embracing safety in each other's arms. But when he died, each day would be endless dark monotony, without the soothing memory that warms a lost soul struggling to survive, the pain of being lost alive frightened by the shock of nevermore. From thunderbolts that split apart your fertile but now fragile heart and said, set sail for some new distant shore. Was it by chance or some design? Your sorrow found its way to mine and I was on that same deserted sea, adding teardrops to its swells, despairing while confined in hells, unanswered prayers my only company. The merging streams, the greater sum, the flood of life's continuum, our separate persons joining hand in hand to climb the craggy peaks ahead and bless the living, praise our dead, accepting blessings however unplanned. Our lives collided while afloat, t'was not a sea but just a moat, a shining castle beckoned us to land and share the love that once we knew Four loves blended into two, and hopes that coming days may yet expand. And when someday we say goodbye, our saddened hearts won't need to cry. The same forsaken tears from long ago, ennobled by each other's strengths, will honor pain and treasure links that brought us back into the sunlight's glow. Thank you. A few days after a dear friend lost her husband, Ed, to leukemia and Alzheimer's, I sat down at my kitchen table, which has a view to her kitchen window, and I wrote, My dear Bernice, I was thinking about you this morning, thinking how different your life will be now. Some things will change, no more visits with Ed, no more conferences with the staff regarding his care, no more transitions to hospice, no more reports to your children and your, about his condition. No more waiting for that fateful phone call. Some things, however, will remain the same. Caring for your home, paying your bills, food shopping and errands, helping your children and loving your grandchildren. And now going back to work as a dedicated caregiver for your own clients. You will no doubt have many memories of the past 25 years popping into your head at unexpected times, moments. I call these triggers. You will see the good times and the not so good times. Yours like mine, 
will be mostly private. Silly times, profound times, loving times, sad and anxious times. Allow yourself to watch as your past throws through your restless mind, Bernice. Give yourself permission to cry and cry hard when you need to. Laugh out loud at the funny times and let go of the guilt. Tell yourself, I did the best that I could with the marriage and the disease. And share your personal memories, Bernice, whenever you feel the need. Sharing is a gift to a friend. All of us have uncomfortable places in our lives that we believe only happen to us. The anxiety of these issues will be greatly reduced simply by sharing them, I know. I do believe that God or whomever is making these decisions takes the men first because he knows that many of them could not make it on their own. This is his way of protecting them. They needed us to the very end. As we sat in your kitchen the other day sharing tears, you spoke of your life during the early years. Time passed and your marriage to Ed was less than perfect. As he struggled with his diseases and changing personality, you also struggled to maintain your devotion to him with his changing personality, sorry, all the while fam faithfully attending to his mounting daily medical needs. I could sense the guilt in your voice as you wondered what more you could have done. You found yourself struggling with keeping him safe while showing him dignity, compassion, and patience as his personality changes made it more difficult. I too experienced that supreme trust between two people. I imagined you steeling yourself against the constant frustration that can slowly give way to anger. And you must have wondered, do I still love him? <coughs> How do you define love, Bernice? I remember that poignant scene from Fiddler on the Roof when Tevya and Golda are discussing their daughter's wedding. It's only then that they realize that she is marrying for love. Feeling anxious, Tevya finds the courage to ask Golda, do you love me? And Golda responds, do I love you? Again, he tries again. Do you love me? She sighs. Do I love you? For 25 years, I've washed your clothes, cooked your meals, cleaned your house, cared for your children, milked the cow. Why ask about love right now? His question still not answered. Tevya tries again. But do you love me? Golda continues. I've lived with him, fought with him, starved with him. 25 years, my bed is his. If that isn't love, what is? Golda never does say, yes, I love you, but the supposition is there, and Tevya is happy. This exchange bears the complication of love. It can go from strong to fragile in a given moment, or it can deepen over many, many years. Love is expressed by caring and support, even when the odds are stacked against you. <coughs> even when you are tired and impatient, when you know that all hope has vanished. Love is expressed by the gratitude one feels being trusted to care for another. Yes, Bernice, he loved you, and you loved him in your own special way. And it's time now to love yourself. And as you prepare for the next phase of your life, I pray that you will be the recipient of the same caring love that you so unselfishly gave Ed, my dear friend. In 2014, my prayer was answered when a true love came into Bernice's life. After meeting and rejecting nine applicants of Match.com, she gave number 10 just one last chance. It was then that she met Ted, a sweet and wonderful man who had lost his wife just a few years prior. It was a magical connection. After selling their homes in Massachusetts, they settled into a new home together on the shores of Maine. In January of 2016, Bernice and Ted were married at their home and are living happily ever after. Thank you.
When I was a little girl, I sat on daddy's knee. He trot me off to Boston as we sang our melody. Sit me on his shoulder, show the world to me, and stroked my hair with gentle hands. Gentle hands that touch me, fill me with delight. Tender arms that hold me, comfort me at night. Precious love that brings me all the joy I'll ever need. All my life I'll remember gentle hands. When I met the lover who would want me as his wife, he quietly convinced me we could build a life. I knew we'd stay together when he looked into my eyes and caressed my face with gentle hands. Gentle hands that touch me fill me with delight tender arms that hold me comfort me at night precious love that brings me all the joy i'll ever need all my life i'll remember gentle hands i know that in the darkest hours they meant the world to me a feeling I could never quite explain. When troubles came and sadness filled my heart, I always knew gentle hands would be there to ease the pain. And when I cared for mother as she lay there in her bed, I'd read her stories to her, make memories in her head. Hold up flowers close to her, let her smell the spring, and stroke her hair with gentle hands. Someday when I'm older, looking out beyond, the days that bring not what I know to be. I'll see into the future with a light that waits for me. I want the peace of gentle hands. Gentle hands that touch me, fill me with delight tender arms that hold me comfort me at night precious love that brings me all the joy i'll ever need all my life i'll remember gentle hands all my life i'll remember gentle hands thank you very much when endless February yields to March's blowy bluster And brighter days presage a change For lives that lack in luster I emerge from hibernation Raise my head and look around Venture forth to wander the streets of my hometown Navigate the puddles Avoid the icy flows And discover frozen fossils In mounds of dirty snow Dirty snow Where once was clean and crystal Dirty snow now sheltering a mystery of what will be revealed 
when springtime breezes blow and melt away those mounds of dirty snow. Broken side view mirror, crumpled cardboard tray, bicycle half buried, mitten gone astray. Here's a handbill for a concert, canceled by a blizzard, and something I don't recognize. Maybe it's a lizard? And canine carpro lights to keep me careful where my feet go as I walk the streets of town. Past mounds of dirty snow, dirty snow Where once was clean and crystal, dirty snow Now sheltering a mystery of what will be revealed When springtime breezes blow and melt away those mounds of dirty snow Wander past detritus Of winter in the city Contemplate the substance, the volume, the variety that stimulates the senses, visual and olfactory, the evidence, the effluence of urban humanity. But looking past the grime and garbage, one thing I know There are daffodils and crocus Beneath the dirty snow Dirty snow Where once was clean and crystal Dirty snow Now sheltering a mystery of what will be revealed when springtime breezes blow and melt away those mounds of dirty snow melt away those mounds of dirty snow Thank you. This piece is called Weathering the Storm. A powerful hit this time, I cannot deny. Beset in blues, I hurt and hide. So quiet for so long, I don't care. Sometimes I get the blues so bad. All in my head, the first shrink said. That manic doc made me so mad. All in my head wouldn't be so bad. I usually come out of it better. Not so well this time. Play K to these blues far too long. Need to look deep inside till it hurts if I dare. Past anger and confusion and the illusion of fear. Storm's long past. The effect still here. It's a dangerous game when the self is at war. In a diligent pursuit of the person at the core. With mood transfixed like a raging storm, thrashing and crashing obliterating form, with bellowing echoes and a thunderous roar, waves cut and carve stone into sand and shore. A shrink or pill was never the fix, no longer a drifting paradox. I am the remedy, this I am certain. Such a presumptuous insight, these unconscious blues, a forewarned forbearance, to pass over or choose. By the time the cliff breaches into the sound, 
I will have rebuilt my house on more solid ground. Sometimes I get the blues so bad, but it will never break me. Thank you. When the lake sparkles, I see phenomenon or something else arriving from far away of light. What dance is it that bounces on and off? Maybe unevenness of lakes water, the fluid state. It's a seasonal thing, I know. Another time of beginning again as we all rotating around planets and stars sit together. Now this early morning wake, a sparkle of energy perhaps belongs only to the lake, or it could be leftover vibrations that come from voices, young swimmers calling out years, months before in the heat of summer. This sparkle gift to present, each tiny crest in nanoseconds, a sparkle erupts, then disappears, becomes fractal memory. I want to bless sparkle energy this moment that celebrates every random bit of light, all arrivals and disappearances. Thank you.